So hi, everyone. My name is Ami, and I'm actually the newest member in the team. So it makes sense that I will introduce the JTK, because when I just arrived here a few months ago, I was asking, what is the JTK, and what people do with that, and what is actually, who are the people that use it, and how? So uh, you already heard um, Geraldine introduction and Eric introduction. Actually, some of the things that Eric was talking about, uh, I will talk again about these uh, things. And um, so we actually can ask, what is the JTK? So basically, JTK was uh, created in order to give the programmers or the developer a, a good tool in order to write um, analysis tools. And this is how we use it. And other people in the world use it the same way, and also in the world. But I think that currently, probably most of our users are not developers, and probably most of them use it as out of the book box tool, and then they run it, run some tool, or maybe run the whole pipeline, or best practices pipeline, and then do the analysis on the output of these tools or the outputs of the pipeline. So two terms that it's good to know when you actually come to work with the GATK. So I, in the first part of the talk, I will present some terms or concepts that it's good to know when you be, start uh, working with the GATK. And then we will actually look on the best practices pipeline that Eric just showed you before. So there is two terms that we, you will see in the documentation and you will hear during the workshop that are, we, we will repeat again and again. So one of them is the engine and the other one is the tool. So these are the two layers that we, they are in the, um, in the JTK. And so different tools, and we call them workers sometimes. So if we, we switch between workers and tools, they are the same. So sometimes we will say worker, and you, you see that in some documentation they are called workers. This was the original name. And nowadays we are calling them tools. So some tools have different properties. For example, if you want to do snip calling and using the, genotype, uh, the unified genotyper, what you are actually want to see each time is just one locus. You want to see locus at a time. You want to work on one locus and then to see the next locus. And so the engine is actually responsible to provide the information that the tool is need, need in order to work. So this is one type of um, Tool. Other tool, for example, might want to see a whole read each time. So then the engine is actually provide a whole read each time. So this is the relationship between the engine and the tools. The engine is actually running everything and provides the data, and the tools are actually processing and do the, the actual work. So, um, and again, this is something that you will probably will see during the workshop uh, many times, and of course in the hand-ons. So. This is a basic uh, GATK command line. So as you can see that the GATK is Java command line and it uses a GATK jar file. And then we actually have to say to the engine what, what type of tool or what, what, what do we want to use. So this is actually the tool that we want to use. It can be uh, any one of the tools that we have in the GATK. Then we tell what is the reference genome. And these two parameters are required in any command, GATK command line. And then based on the tools that you want to work, it, you have different inputs. So if you work on BAM files, then you have to say which BAM file you want. And this argument can be also a list of BAM files. And if you work on variant files, then you use the dash V and say which variant file you're working on. Uh, usually we also uh, say what is the output file that you want. And very important is the interval. So you, you, you can specify which part of the genome you want to work on. So in, in this case, it's chromosome 20, specific interval in chromosome 20. You can say a whole chromosome. For example, it can be just dash L20 or dash LX, and then you just work on the whole chromosome. And you can also use it with multiple interval, and then you can say if you want the union of them or inter intersection of the interval. It depends on, on what you actually want to run. And if you don't use this parameter at all, then you're actually working on a whole genome sequencing. And this is what we have in the whole genome sequencing. We don't need to specify which uh, interval we are working on. Um, OK. So another two concepts that Eric already mentioned, the, the light versus the full version. So after 
we uh, published the JTK 2.0, we actually have two versions, the light version and the full version. So basically the engine in both of them are the same engine and the differences are only in the set of tools. The, most of the tools are the same in, in the light and in the full version. Some tools are different. Some tools have the same functionality but just newer and more advanced tools. And some tools are just exist only in the full version and does not exist at all in the light version. I will get to it in, in a few slides when I will show again the pipeline. But before I show the pipeline of the best practices, what is actually, when we say best practices, what, what does it mean? So the best practices, as we refer here in the workshop, and the title of the workshop is actually the best practices to use the JTK for variant calling. So when we say that, we actually use the experience that we have with human project here at the Broad. So some users can, might not be able to apply this recommendation to their data because they have da different data sets or because they have different experimental designs. So they might not be useful for all the people, but being in this workshop is actually useful for all the people because even if you choose to use different tools or choose to use different parameters, what we are going to talk here at the, at the workshop is mainly about what are the different steps, what are the different tools, how do you use it, and more importantly, why you use the different tools. So even if you're going to change the parameters or build your own pipeline based on that, it's important to know this information before you actually want to use the, the different tools. And uh, of course, all the recommendations are not something that you must follow. If you have a, a similar design to human uh, projects that we actually work, like Exxon Capture, then we do recommend to follow them, but if you have a slightly different design, then of course this is just a starting point to explore what will be your best parameters or what will be your set of tools that you want to use. And again, you can all, always go back and see uh, in the documentation on the website the best practices um, documentation. So, as Eric said, you already saw this, I think, twice, and this is the third time. You're going to see it so many times during the workshops that I'm sure that by the end of today, and mostly for sure for tomorrow, you will know how to draw this uh, diagram by yourself. So this diagram is actually the pipeline that we are using when we, when we say best practices. So as Eric mentioned, we have three phases. Phase one is data processing. The second phase is uh, variant discovery and genotypes. And the third phase, it's actually the processing of the call set and also uh, evaluate the call set if you have a good call set or not. So the first phase starts with raw data coming out of the sequencer I just uh, described. And then it ends with analysis read, uh, ready reads. So the first thing that you have to do is the mapping. You map it back to the reference, as Eric showed. You map the reads back to the genome reference. And then you move, you move duplication. You, this is the first uh, analysis that you do. And these are external tools. It's, they are not part of the JTK, but they are part of our best practices pipeline. So you map, remove duplication, and then um, in potential site, in sites that you think that there might be um, variant, you want to do a little bit uh, more refined alignment. So can you, you, you get more accurate alignment. So in these regions, we actually do local realignment around these regions. So we will get better results later on on the pipeline. And the best quality recalibration, again, Eric show you what are the best quality scores. So before we actually use them, we do recalibration. We know that they are not, we can't use them as they get out of the machine. We need to do some recalibration and it will be um, explained later on. But this is one of the steps in the data processing. And then you have the analysis ready reads that actually can go to variant uh, discovery. And you can do it for each sample by itself, or you, you can do joint calling. And of course, we are recommend of, on joint calling because you will probably will get a much better result when you have many samples together. And then when we say call, we actually mean SNPs, indels, and uh, structural variation. 
So this, by the end of this phase, you have a set of variants, and then you want to know which variant you can trust more, what is the quality of the set, and the processing step in phase three, you get all the set of SNP indolent structural variants, and then you use also non variants, you, know, you use non genotypes that are coming from external sources, you use other type of sources like the pedigree, if it's a pedigree, you can use the pedigree information, and then you take everything into account and you recalibrate again. But not, this time you recalibrate the variant quality recalibration, and then you actually have better. Uh, quality scores for each one of the variants, and you can do filtering, and then at the end you can do the evaluation of your call set. There are also um, steps that are not shown here in the diagram. For example, you, you can do phasing, or you can do um, function annotation, and I think that Eric is going to talk a little bit about them tomorrow. So this is a pipeline, and in the blue boxes, it's the things that are only uh, exist in the full version versus the light. So everything that you see here without the blue boxes are, is exist in the light version. And in the, these are the main three differences between the full version and the light version. So in the light version, the, the same functionality exists in this case. There is base quality recalibrator, but in the full version we have, we extended this tool. We extended this tool and we have uh, First of all, much faster and also uh, uh, recalibration that produce better results that we will use later on in, in the next phase. Yeah. You wanted to ask? Somebody wanted to? You okay. Um, so this functionality was exist, but it just, we have just a better tool in the full version. A functionality that was not exist before, but we have them only in the full version, is reduced reads. Since we want to deal with bigger data, we need somehow a tool that can reduce the size of the data that we look, but still keep the information that we need for the calling. And Mauricio will, I think, will explain this later today. And another uh, main difference between the light version and the full version is the haplotype color. So if you use the light version, your color will be the unified genotyper, which again, look on one uh, locus at a time. And when you use uh, the full version, you can choose to switch to the haplotype color, which actually look on a whole haplotype, and then it can actually uh, discover more variants in higher quality, again, mostly for indels, and Brian will explain this part uh, tomorrow. So these are the main three differences uh, between the light and the full version, and this diagram will be again and again in all the uh, talks today and tomorrow. So you can run, in this diagram, you can run a whole genome or a whole uh, exome pipelines. Of course, there are differences mainly in the parameters and also in some of the tools. But we, our best practice is the documentation. We have recommendation of uh, what should be the parameters for each case. So if you want run a whole genome or if you run a whole exome, then you can actually go to the documentation and see what are the different in the parameters of the different tools. Uh, if you users that actually send us BAM file and, and now you are sending um, it to the Picard team, so what, when you send, oh, I want to do uh, variant calling on this set, what, do, what does it mean? So our main production pipeline is now is whole exome variant calling with the unified genotyper. So we are not using yet the haplotype code color for the main production pipeline. We, we are using the unified genotyper, and right now most of the things that we are doing is a whole exome, and it's part of the Picard team, right? It was transferred to them last month. Um, I will skip this because I just got a single of two minutes. Uh, okay, so just, I, I won't go into details of what is the whole exome pipeline, but I do want to highlight a few points that are important for you in order to understand better the pipeline, and also important if you want to design your own pipeline, these are the type of the things that you have to consider when you want to do that. So up, it used to run on batches of up to 100 samples, but now with the reduced reads, we can actually run it with many, many samples. I just run it with 26,000 samples 
exome samples together, so it is feasible with the new tools. Uh, we do pad with 50 base pairs at the end of the intervals in order to capture variants that are close to the exome intervals, and usually we have enough coverage in this area, so it is uh, possible to do that. And the, main, and the main point here is that if you have more data and if you have more sample, you will get better results. So we do want to see at least 50 samples in cases where we don't have 50 samples, but it, uh, the, the experimental design use the standard bro uh, exome interval of the broad, we can actually use the 1,000 genome samples and add 50 samples and then do joint calling and at the end filter out the samples that came, in, came from the 1,000 genomes. So this is what we actually do when we have less than 50 samples and we use the standard uh, exome f uh, intervals. And in other cases, we just use um, hard filters instead of the VQSR, which is the more advanced tool to do the filtering. Um, I will just mention it in a few words. So this is more advanced stuff. So we won't get into, into this uh, type of uh, information here in the workshop, but it is good to know that uh, JT can, can run in parallel. There are a few ways to do that. It can be run in parallel. You can, uh, you can take your, um, your data and chop it into small pieces and then run and scatter it on a farm like LSF, like on, on some farm, a computer farm, and then gather it together. We actually have a companion package that do that. When you download the JTK, you can you also download the queue and you can use it, but we won't get into it in this workshop. It's more advanced stuff. And there are other two ways to do, to run in parallel. So one of them is NT, which is number of threads. You just use Java threads in order to run a few uh, things on the same CPU core. And then NCT is num number of CPU thread, which you can run different threads on different cores. If you have multi-core machine, then you can run uh, different, each thread on different core. And this is, and all of them can run together. You can combine the different uh, type of different way and run them together. And just, again, just to zoom in from the high level overview to, to what we're actually going to do in the next talks. So you already saw this chart. So now, today, all the talks today are going to be, going to focus only on this, on phase one. So today we're going to talk about the mapping, the um, uh, removing duplication, local realignment, best quality recalibration and the reduced risk. So all these are going, the next talks that we're going to, to talk today. And tomorrow, these two sections will be covered. Um, I think that that is. Do we have time for questions? No, okay. So I think that most of the questions that probably people might have are related to the different uh, steps and each one of the steps we're going to be covered in, de in more depth uh, by other people today or tomorrow. But if you have any other question about the high level overview, you're welcome to, to ask me during the coffee break. And I will call Mauricio. Mauricio is leading our tech, tech dev in the group and he will talk about the mapping. Do you have?